On this week's episode of Pure Brews America, we get into a bit of a sticky situation at Pigeon Hill Brewing Company. What's better than creating your own craft beer? Getting your face on the label. We teamed up with Draft Horse Brewery to make our very own Pure Brews Apple Pie Ale. Then it's off to one of the oldest and largest breweries in the nation, Great Lakes Brewing Company. I'm Shannon Long, founder of Brew Export, and I want to welcome you to Pure Brews America. Join me as I travel across Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois on a journey to discover the amazing stories, people, and places that make up the craft beer industry's greatest breweries. Hey, it's Shannon Long, and today I'm checking out Pigeon Hill Brewing Company in Muskegon, Michigan. I love the atmosphere, the great people. And a wonderful beer. This is one of the friendliest places. This is just, the, the, their staff is great. And every time you come in, you feel welcome, whether you've been here a hundred times or the first time. Because it only took one visit or two here to realize that there's like a community here. I love Pigeon Hill. Um, I've been a Mug Club member here for two years. I turned my dad onto being a Mug Club member here. So um, that's kind of our father-son thing that we do is get together and uh, drink beer every Tuesday. So. You can come with friends after work and unwind, but still come on the weekends and bring kids and play games and have lunch. I really like the fact that they don't have TVs because we can all sit and talk with each other. And then all of a sudden you've got 30 people talking to each other and drinking good beer. I love Pigeon Hill. It's a great place to be. Pigeon Hill Brewing was founded in 2014 and named after the Muskegon tourist spot that was leveled decades ago after years of sand mining. Uh, you know, it was kind of as though when Pigeon Hill disappeared, Muskegon's sense of self and worth we went with it. And we wanted to bring those back together. You know, we were young professionals. We, didn't, we weren't tied down, so we could have moved anywhere. And we, we chose to stay in Muskegon. It's, it's a diamond in the rough. It's got beautiful beaches. It's got a beautiful lake. It's got great people. Over the past few years, we've seen as first Unruly open, and then we open, and more restaurants are opening, more events are occurring down here. Uh, we're seeing not just local foot traffic, which hadn't happened in decades. Uh, we're actually seeing tourism even in the dead of winter. All right, Alana, AKA the feisty Latina. Yep. Is that correct? If I get really fired up about something, they know it, so they call me the feisty Latina when they see it, but it's very rare that it comes out, so. Now, Michael is your husband. How has it been being the sidekick for someone who is opening up a brewery? I was very supportive. I thought it was a great idea. I've personally always worked in the industry. I love the industry. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's drink some beer. So we have a couple options in a can now. We just started canning this past year. So we now have Walter Bondale. So this is going to be a beer for anyone who's kind of entering the craft beer scene. Great beer. It's also a good everyday drinker. It's low ABV, 5%. Oh my gosh, this is such a great clean beer. My favorite beer is Walter. I like Walter, regular, it's mostly a summer beer. It's just a fun, easy drinking beer. I actually bought a keg of Walter for my wife's surprise birthday party a couple weekends ago, so yeah, it's great. That's one of my favorites as well. Another Pigeon Hill beer, your mom on French toast, has become so popular that it's inspired your grandma on French toast and your grandma on chili pepper. A lot of times what Chris will do is take one of our base beers and he'll tweak it or make it, he'll spice it or he'll do something and that's exactly where French toast came from. It was our Imperial Stout. Chris made French toast out of it and here we are with talking about French toast. Everyone wants your mom on French toast so <laughs> and just to say it. <laughs> they have a bunch of random names here and I don't know what they mean but I think that's half the fun. Um, I also when they released their cans of your mom on French toast I came in and bought a four pack of those and I still have two cans left in my fridge that I've been saving for a, a special occasion. Last but not least OCP oatmeal cream pie. Yeah. The baby. This is what, you yes. know, is building, building you guys up to stardom here. It is. It tastes exactly like an oatmeal cream pie cookie. Yeah, oatmeal cream pie is, is my creation. That was one that you know, my wife was making these oatmeal cream pie cookies and and she was like, can you make a beer that tastes like this? this is back when I was home brewing in my garage. To be honest, the first batch turned out exactly how I wanted it to turn out. And usually it doesn't happen when you nail it the first time. Oatmeal cream pie is one of my favorite beers. It's very flavorful, but it's also a little sweet too, so it's got a good flavor to it. I have at least one OCP every time I'm here, so. 
Who's ever had a, a s'more made with oatmeal cream pie cookies off of a roofing torch? With the oatmeal cream pie beer. Exactly. Okay. I think you're done. Perfect. <laughs> nice and crispy. Right. How is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> To keep up with the demand of OCP, Pigeon Hill opened a 10,000 square foot production facility a few blocks from the tap room. This is one of the most immaculately beautiful breweries I've Thanks. ever Thanks. stuck foot in. Cool. So you're doing good things. Thanks. And you guys are ready to expand. Absolutely. I got, I got room for 11 more tanks. Just plug and play at this point. So we got the valves in, just plug and play. More oatmeal cream pie. More OCP, baby. <laughs> Before we wrapped up our visit to Pigeon Hill, I just had to see firsthand how oatmeal cream pie is made. So I hear you're gonna get me a little bit messy today. What do you have planned? What you're gonna be doing now is uh, putting the marshmallow actually into the boil. Sounds messy, sounds sticky, sounds awesome. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> oh Marshmallow's a little bit different. It comes out all right, but it doesn't like to come off the spoon. So oh my gosh. You've only got five <laughs> gallons to put in. Can you use your hands? You can use your hands. Oh, that's a good though. Oh yep. boy. There you go. I'm not going to mess anything up. I mean, this isn't going to be a bad batch of beer. If it is, it's your fault. It's <laughs> a lot of pressure. We'll also have to keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't start to boil over. So if it looks like it's getting foamy, let me know. Okay. Careful not to lose your glove. Wait, you're not supposed to have gloves and beer? That's not a no, thing? <laughs> that's not a thing. Rubber and beer is a mouth flavor. Is this how you do it? Or do you dump it? I usually hold the bucket up there. <clears throat> Let's try that. <laughs> okay. We're in business. I'm literally covered in marshmallow right now. It's worth it. It's worth it for the yeah, beer. It is, yes. <laughs> Try it this way. Oh yeah, here's the. There tank. you go. This is what we were looking for. Good. Yeah. Yep. I think that's plenty. Can I eat it? Yes. Now you can eat it as long as you don't put your hand in the beer. Mm. <laughs> <I thought. laughs> we had a great time today at Pigeon Hill, and everyone, thank you so much. Thank you. Woo! Jack Link's Jerky presents Versus. As you can see by our irrefutable science, Jack Link's has more protein and better music than these other snacks. Jack Link's Jerky beats the snack out of other snacks. Introducing Jack Link's Extra Tender Steak Strips. Welcome back to Pure Brews America. Founders, two brothers, Dragonmead, and many others turned 20 this year. Meyer also sold their very first craft beer more than 20 years ago. Today, they've expanded their selection to hundreds of craft beers, creating the expansive array that is the Beer Frontier. The Beer Frontier is your in-store and online home for discovering and exploring the best breweries and beers. The Beer Frontier is a one-stop shop for pairings, recipes, expert picks, and beer releases. I go into Meyer now to buy good beer. You know, they've got the selection now. They, they, it's fresh. It's, the prices are great. So they've been, a, they've been a huge promoter of us. Can't wait to produce enough to get into all the Meyer stores. So. Part of the beauty of that, not just for me, but for others in the craft beer scene, is this really homegrown store, um, now large chain, 
is fostering the growth of homegrown breweries. Uh, they've started carrying not just great regional and national craft, they're carrying local craft. What people like Meyer can do for this industry is educate people and giving the consumer the chance to come in and see a broad range of, of craft styles. It's not hard to get a lot of different breweries represented these days, but having the consumer be able to come in and see the breadth that this industry can provide, making sure what they carry is, is quality so that the consumers that do experiment a little bit and try to broaden their horizons around beer are getting good beer. And I think Meyer's great at that, of you know, deciding which breweries and what styles should be represented. So it really helps educate the consumer. Join us in exploring Meyer's shelves and celebrating over 20 years of commitment to craft by checking out The Beer Frontier. Hey, it's Shannon Long, and today we're at Draft Horse Brewing Company in New Hudson, Michigan. We're brewing a Pure Brews collaboration beer with my friend Brad Tiernan. Brad, I'm pretty excited about this uh, collaboration beer. It's been a long time coming. I think we all are, because <laughs> apple pie and a beer, I don't think you get a whole lot of them out there. Well, I'm super excited. Let's, uh, let's get this day started. We gotta start milling in. It's time <laughs> to start crushing some grain. So, 50 pounds? 50 pounds. Let's do this. I've been doing my insanity workout just for this moment. Oh, we got this. <laughs> so we have a lot of different malts in this beer. Yes, there is. Um, we're using Maris Otter as a base malt. There's uh, 50 pounds of Victory that's going into it. Some flaked oats going into it. Wheat malt. It's going to add a nice cloudiness to it and uh, more flavor. Wonderful. Uh, flaked oats to give some body and some mouthfeel texture. It's a pretty good beer, I think. It's going to come out. And we're actually going to add to this. Oh, flakes, right? Yep, flaked oats. Time to make it some oatmeal like in there. With all this tasty grain. Am I going too fast? Nope. Okay. <laughs> He's like trying to keep going. You uh you need a little bit of a break? Um yeah, you know you can take over. <laughs> You're gonna get your workout in today. I know. And my facial. So this, this isn't too much hops. It's not too much hops. If we had a lot, I would tell you to make sure you sprinkle them. I'll okay. still sprinkle them. Uh, you can sprinkle them and have some fun. That's all sprinkle. right. Sprinkle. And this this isn't going to make our beer too hoppy at all. Not at all. I mean, this beer is really made for you, someone. You would probably bet there aren't like any hops in it at all when you're going to taste the beer. <laughs> so I just got to not drop the bowl in, right? Don't drop the bowl That would be awkward. In, would I, you be mad at me? No, I would not be mad. But <laughs> I would be mad at me. We empty the tank. Somebody's got to go in there and get it. I would nominate you. And we're about to spice this beer. We are, absolutely, absolutely. You're thinking of those earthy, warm fall spices. We've got some vanilla beans. We've got some Smells cinnamon. so good. We're even doing some fresh nutmeg. We're gonna grate it by hand. This is gonna be as fresh as possible. We're wow. Put our cinnamon in here to crush it, because can't have the whole sticks in there. It might clog something up. I also have a little bit of cardamom. And this is a nice, uh, uncommon thing in an apple pie type beer, but uh, it'll be enough to add some earthy notes to it. Very cool, very cool. So. That is like, <laughs> literally smells identical to an apple pie. I'm telling you. You hit that perfectly. <laughs> All right, so we just sprinkle, sprinkle in. Sprinkle in, dump it, or yeah, you're probably just gonna have to do it that way. There you go, just like it was a Parmesan cheese. Ooh, that's hot. It's hot, yeah. All right. Yeah, so don't we'll take it. go this way. All right. Oh my goodness. Our apple pie beer is officially spiced with apple, apple-y spices. Apple pie spices, nice, warm, earthy. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna get a whirlpool going and let it settle, and then we're gonna transfer it into the fermenter. And then in the fermenter, that's, that's where the where, magic happens. That's where it happens. The yeast <laughs> makes all that cool flavors and alcohol. So we will close this and open this, and boom. So now we're adding the yeast. Yep. Pitching the yeast. Pitching the yeast. We're going with the English yeast strain. An English ale yeast strain. That's going to give us uh, aromas of uh, apple, pear, and a little bit of honey and apricot notes. Yeast is in the fermenter, which means it's beer. It's beer. It's officially beer. So we got to say it. It's beer in the fermenter. bottling day as we can hear. I grabbed a bottle right off the line. I'm so excited to taste it. What happened between 
the day we brewed it, and today are a lot of different things go into it, from label creation, and um, you have to get them all approved and everything else. We had to add in apples. We added 40 pounds of apple extract from King Orchard, so another, another Michigan product to keep everything super local. After we added that, it fermented down a little bit more, boosted up the alcohol a little bit, but I don't think it matters. This is such a patio pounding, crushable beer. I'm a little nervous too. This is our, uh, this is our baby. Cheers, we did a great job. Pure Brews America is sponsored by Fago, the original craft pop that's been made in Michigan for 110 years. Pick up a two liter or six pack today to create the perfect craft cocktail. When we started 20 years ago, the beer business was tough. So we played it safe and brewed the beers we thought people were expecting, which led us pretty much right to the edge of bankruptcy. So we figured we may as well start brewing beers that we liked. Bigger, bolder, aromatic, in your face beers. And luckily, it turned out a few other folks enjoyed those beers as well. So now if it's brewed by us, it's really brewed for us. That's the secret. But you just told everybody. <laughs> At Meyer, we believe in the people who believe in themselves and bringing our customers the very best local craft beers from all over Michigan, like Founders, Bells, and Shorts. Because things that come from nearby don't just taste better and fresher. They help keep our prices low and our communities thriving. I'm Mike Stevens. And I'm Dave Ingers. Look for us and great beers from all over Michigan at your local Meyer. Welcome back to Pure Brews America. Did you know that there are over a hundred different beer styles? This variety creates so many opportunities for awesome pairings with jerky from our friends over at Jack Link's. With so many options, where should you start? How about Jack Link's Extra Tender Teriyaki Beef Steak Strips? I recommend contrasting the sweet flavors of the teriyaki seasoning with a great sour beer like Oro de Calabaza from Jolly Pumpkin Artisan Ales. You could also substitute that with one of the great sour beers from Upland or Transient Artisan Ales. So visit your local Meyer store today to stock up on Jack Links and your favorite craft beer. This perfect pairing will help feed your wild side. Now it's time for the latest scoop from Hopcat. Hopcat is pouring into the 20th annual Michigan Brewers Guild Summer Beer Festival on July 21st and 22nd in Ypsilanti. Hopcat's Grand Rapids Brewery will be sampling some of the latest creations from its small batch brewery, handing out swag, and hanging with dozens of our favorite breweries from around the state. On Saturday, don't miss the Crack Fries Eating World Championship, featuring regional champions from across the country. And now, here are my friends Gary and Cam cooking up a beer-inspired dish. We're going to put our focus on ice cream with beer. Today I used a big imperial stout for this ice cream and I chose it because of its big, bold, roasty flavor. Beer doesn't freeze very well. The water in the beer freezes, but the beer doesn't freeze. So we're gonna remove the water. So you're gonna wanna take the egg yolks and the vanilla and start mixing them and start creaming your sugar with the egg. You should be able to mix that in well and it should turn into kind of a gooey yellow color. Now that the beer is nice and reduced, we're going to take about half heavy cream and half half and half cream. Your whole goal here is to get this cream hot enough to cook the eggs and create a custard. So from there, we're going to want to take our hot cream and slowly introduce it so we don't make scrambled eggs. Then we're gonna take this and let it cool down to refrigerator temperature. All right, so you probably don't have one of these lying around at home. You can go to Meyer and get one of these. It'll be a much smaller version. It'll probably be hand operated. So we're just gonna let this go and chill down a little bit and it will turn into ice cream. So this is how you make 
ice cream with beer. Cheers. Cheers, Gary. Three, two, one. We are now open. The 20th annual Michigan Brewers Guild Summer Beer Festival will host more than 100 Michigan craft breweries sampling around 1,000 different craft beers. The oldest and largest of the Michigan Brewers Guild festivals is located in Ypsilanti's Riverside Park in historic Depot Town on July 21st and 22nd. My recommendation is to always go to try some breweries that you've never been to. A new brewery, just something you that's too far away from your house and you just don't ever have a chance to get there. There's more than ever. It's fresher than ever. It's better than ever. It's easier to get than ever. And there's still a lot of people that don't know. So keep sharing a beer with your friends and turning new people on to what's happening. Go to MIBeer.com today to get your tickets to the Michigan Brewers Guild Summer Beer Festival and to sign up for the Enthusiast Membership, which includes VIP status and early admission to all four Michigan Brewers Guild festivals. Membership also gets you a subscription to MI Brew Magazine and an exclusive t-shirt. When Pure Brews America returns, we head out to one of the country's oldest craft breweries, Great Lakes Brewing Company. Velastic Pickles is a proud partner of Pure Brews America and the craft beer industry. Don't forget to pick up a jar of Velastic Pickles to enjoy with your next craft beverage or Bloody Mary. At Planters, we're all about great taste, and we thoroughly test all our nuts for superior craveability. Hey, Richard, check out this fresh roasted flavor. Looks delicious, huh? Yeah. Richard, try to control yourself. I can't help it. And how about that aroma? Love that aroma. <clears throat> Craveability approved. Oh, can I have some now? Sure. Help yourself. Wait, what? Irresistibly planters. We don't frost brew our beer, and hot chicks won't appear if you drink it. Our beer doesn't come in a bow tie shaped can or need color indicators to tell you it's cold. It won't be delivered by Clydesdale horses, and to tell you the truth, we aren't the most interesting people in the world. Fact of the matter is, we don't tell stories. We just let our beer do the talking. Back in the early 2000s, Janice would have dropped off all four of her kids at soccer practice after a sit-down dinner. But Janice is a mother today, so all four of Janice's kids are on four separate paths of self-discovery, which occur at four different times in the afternoon, leaving a total of four minutes for her kids to eat. Even though dinner time has become less strict, we remain strict as ever when it comes to our standards. Made with premium cuts of 100% kosher beef, so you can feel good feeding your family no matter what time dinner is. Hebrew National, we remain strict. Hey, it's Shannon Long, and today I'm down in Cleveland, Ohio, hanging out with my friends at Great Lakes Brewing Company. Over 30 years ago, brothers Patrick and Daniel Conway opened Great Lakes Brewing Company in Cleveland's Ohio City neighborhood. Great Lakes was, I think, the first craft brewery in Ohio going back to 1988. Even though 1988 was the establishment time, it's like a speakeasy. It's like there should be like people in jail over there. The uh, atmosphere, it's, it's very historic. I like that it's one of the original Cleveland breweries, that it is a landmark in our area. Actually, I worked in this neighborhood at one of the hospitals in this area, and this this was a bad neighborhood. They're the ones that started the, the, the transformation of Ohio City. I don't think we ever dreamt that it would get this crazy. Uh, when I started here, we did about 12,000 barrels. What are you up to now? 165-ish. They've always been true to themselves and good people. Yeah, I love the people, I love the decor, I just love how everyone's generally pretty friendly here. I absolutely love Great Lakes. All right, it's time to drink some beer. All right. What are we doing first? Okay, up first is our Dortmunder Gold Lager. This is our first beer that we've ever produced back in 1988. Pat and Dan worked with a brewer that uh, loved lager beers, and so unusual for a lot of starting craft breweries, we started off making great lagers, and that's still part of our heritage. This is a super, super balanced beer. The malt presence is definitely there, and the hops are certainly not overpowering. Very balanced, very smooth. So we've got the main five that people are used to hearing about, and this year we added another beer, Pilsner, Turntable Pils. The, the Turntable Pils, as it's a great everyday beer. 
this is a clean, 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 amazing beer. Highly yeah. drinkable. Very clear, crisp, um, refreshing. Last but certainly not least, we have Edmund Fitzgerald, and it's a porter. This is a porter. World's most winningest porter also. And I just tried their Edmund Fitzgerald for the first time today. It's chocolate and coffee flavored porter, so it's out of this world. Thanks right. for letting me taste all your beers and keep making yummy ones. All right. Their delicious beer obviously doesn't happen by accident. As a matter of fact, Great Lakes puts a ton of resources into their quality control program. It's, it's pretty intense. I pretty much was the first one in the position in 97. Now we have four guys uh, working in two different labs. We test the beer throughout the whole process, from the brew house all the way through the final product to beyond expiration. We put a date on our beers to make sure that people are drinking them fresh. We've got people in field quality that are out there checking tap lines, working with accounts to make sure that the beer people are drinking out in the market is as close to what we've made here and, and represents Great Lakes Brewery properly. Normally on this show, I get dirty. Today, you're just having me drink some really, really bad beers. Your beer is normally good. It is you normal spiked drink. it with some off flavors, is that what I heard? That is correct, yes. Well, these are, they're mostly off flavors that you're gonna be finding. Sometimes in the market, we like to always like be aware of what we could possibly find out there. So what we have right here now is uh, some of our Burning River that has been uh, spiked with diacetyl. Uh oh. And diacetyl is a uh, probably one of the most common off flavors that you'll find out in the field. Pretty much what it is is it's a bacteria, Pediococcus, that's infecting beer lines. Every two weeks, bars are supposed to, to clean their lines, yep. right? That is our recommendation and also the recommendation of uh, the Brews Association. Oh man. <laughs> so yes. this is this one has a little is it butteriness to it? A little bit of butteriness to it, yes, because of the uh, diacetyl. When you're at a bar and you get butter, that means their draft lines are not A little clean. dirty. All right, what's this one? So what we have right here is Mercaptan. And this is the uh, chemical compound that is uh, created when beer is light struck. We have nice brown glass bottles that we use. We have a nice collar around the top of the bottle and we also on our packaging, we have high tops on the cardboard, which uh, we're trying to prevent any sort of light exposure to our beer. God, it's so bad. <laughs> that one's really, really bad. It like keeps getting worse, I feel. It builds, it builds. It just gets more intense oh, the longer God. it goes. <laughs> I couldn't end our visit with this bad taste in my mouth. So we found out about Great Lakes' most popular and well-known beer, their Christmas ale. We were the, one of the first on the scenes with it, and um, I think people remember that. You know, it does generate a lot of excitement for many people. It marks the beginning of the holiday season. Sometimes I'm here on the day, on the day it comes out, they, like there's a line out the door. That's what got me hooked on craft beers. One or two, man, will put you flat out, but it is so good. For the two months we're out with Christmas Ale, it's the number 10 craft style in the country. Hey guys, thanks for showing me a great time today. Cheers to Great Lakes! Cheers!